over to uh, yes uh, lean to share some testimonies uh, over to you lean chires yes we've had a couple of good testimonies this month last week we prayed for a lady who had she was deaf and she was not she's got hearing aids but she's not able to um hear her clients and she was getting really worried and and upset about it and saying that they can't give her any um appointments to have her hearing tested so i said well we can pray and we prayed and two days later she wrote to me and she said my ears have popped and I'm so happy. It's a miracle. So we just praise God that she can now hear perfectly, Lord, and nothing is missing, nothing lost in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. And then there's another lady who asked for prayer. She had had a really bad neck and um, we prayed and she said, as I prayed, the, all the pain left. And then she was telling me today that Two days later, the pain came back, but she remembered what I'd said. And I told her that if the pain comes back, it's just a test. It's a lie from the devil. So just command the mountain to go. And she commanded the mountain of this pain to go. And instantly it left and she's been free ever since. So we praise God for that. And then I just wanted to share a testimony about a man called Arthur. He had severe dementia and he also had urinary tract infection and he was hospitalized because of it. And we went to pray for him. We caught the bus in and we went to go and pray for him. And he was very, um, well, in, in South African language, you say stroppy. He was very um, abusive. But, and he commanded us to stand still and we weren't allowed to move or anything. But we gave him a prayer cloth and he grabbed this prayer cloth and he wouldn't let it go. And we also prayed for the urinary tract infection and for the dementia. And then we left and we didn't see him for two days. But after two days, we went back to the hospital to go and see how Arthur was doing. And we asked the nurses at the nurses station how Arthur was and if we could see him. And she said, sure just go in and see him. But he wasn't in the ward he was in before, which was a general ward. He had been moved into a private ward. So we went down to this private ward and we found him sitting on the bottom of his bed. And he was chattering. He was so thrilled to see us. And he was chattering and he told us, nurse so-and-so came to give me my breakfast this morning and I had porridge and I had toast and everything. And then He's, he told us a whole lot more about what the doctors had said to him and everything which he had never been able to do before. So we praised God and we said goodbye and we told him we'd go and see him when he gets home. And when he got home, it must have been about a week later, we went to see him and he was absolutely perfect. There was nothing wrong with his mind. He was sitting there building a model aeroplane. And he was able to put all the pieces together. And we gave him one of our books. We spoke about Jesus and gave him one of our little booklets that, um, and said to him, Arthur, you can read this if you like. And he took it and then we had to leave. And it was approximately a week later, we went back to see him. And he was so excited to see us. And he just said, thank you so much for that book. He said, I've rededicated my life to Jesus. And he was so happy and he was 89 years of age and his mind was perfectly clear. And we just praise the Lord because he is the healer today. And one other testimony of also uh, dementia and this man had dementia, Parkinson's. He was in a care home and his wife told us, you know, could we please go and pray for him? He's in the hospital and they say he's not going to survive. So we went along. He had pneumonia and we went along and we prayed for him. And 
I was sitting there while his wife went to go and get some coffee with Calvin. And um, I just looked at all the machines that were opposite. And being a nursing sister, I understood some of the machines, not all the modern ones, but some of them are understood. And I looked at this and I saw, wow, his oxygen levels are dropping. His heart rate is very slow. And from a nursing point of view, I realized this man wasn't going to last very long. So, and suddenly I got the thought, what are you doing, Lynn? Oh, in the name of Jesus, all death get out of this man. And we, we, I spoke life and health and wholeness into his mind and into his brain. And suddenly the oxygen levels started rising, the heartbeat got better. And his wife came back and then we had to go. So that evening she phoned me and she said, Lynn, he's got bed sores and they're taking pictures of them. So I said, oh, well, that's nothing for God. So we prayed over the phone and commanded all the deaths to come out of those bed sores. And we spoke life. And two days later, he was discharged. The, the bed sores had gone completely. His mind had come, come out much better it wasn't perfect yet but he wasn't speaking and he was discharged back to the care home and then his wife phoned me and she said a couple of days later and she said the pastor in the town where he was had come to see him and given him communion and as he ate the bread and drank the wine he started speaking, which he hadn't done for nearly two years. And we just praise the Lord because Jesus stepped in and healed him. He healed him of those bed sores. He healed him of the dementia. And he also healed him of not of being dumb and not being able to speak. And then it was about six months, no, probably about three months later, his wife phoned me and she said, are you going to church today? And I said, yes, of course. And she said, well, Eddie is going to church and he really wants to see you. And she took him into church and he was just sitting in his chair, smiling at everybody, so happy to see all his friends again and just laughing and carrying on. And it was just so awesome to see and I looked and he had had hearing aids and they'd gone. And I said to his wife, I said, what's happened to his Parkinson's medication? And she said, no, he's not taking any medication at all. And he was just so excited to see us and to see everybody there. All his friends, once again, the dementia had gone and he was 86 years of age and God healed him. We just give him the glory and the praise because God is such a wonderful God. He's such a loving God and nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible to him. And we give him the praise and glory because he is the true healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Jireh. And what he did then, he still does today. We just have to believe and receive. And we will see his mighty word. So open your hearts tonight. Listen to Jerry's word. And you will be amazed at what our wonderful God does. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Can, uh, can you share two more testimonies of uh, the COPD uh, of uh, Kelvin and then the CT scan as well, the, the head one? If you oh, okay, yeah. yes. Um, when we were in South Africa, long before we came over here, um, Kelvin had a lot of problems with his chest, but then we had to have x rays done, and the x rays showed that he, you know, before we came over here to work, they showed that he had had COPD because his lungs. I don't know what it showed in the x-rays, but that was the result. And um, so we prayed about it once we knew about healing, because we didn't know much, we didn't know anything about healing in those days. 
And then recently we've been praying against the COPD, but he's, he wasn't getting colds and flu as often as he was because before he was getting the flu and a cough and an infection every like six weeks. But he hadn't had an infection for a long time. And then in November, he had a hernia, a strangulated hernia, and we called 999 and they came in and started doing the test. You know, they do the ECG and they do that finger test of the oxygen levels. And the, the chap said to us, he said, what medication are you on? And Calvin told him what he was using. And he just looked at us and he just shook his head and he said, no. He said, that is totally impossible. He says, this man does not have COPD. His oxygen levels are 99% and that's impossible with COPD. So Jesus has healed him and we praise him for that. And then also from 2013, the enemy attacked him with epilepsy and he started having seizures. So we took him to the doctor and the doctor said they, they don't know what it is, but his brain has shrunk a certain degree. And because of that, it could be causing the seizures, but they weren't sure about it. Then we moved to Wales and they did another scan here, which was probably about four years later. And when we went to go and see the consultant, he, I said to him, that's what they said the cause of the epilepsy was. And the consultant looked at his computer and he was just sitting there and he was shaking his head. And he looked again and he said, no, he says, this brain is perfect. He says, there's no shrinkage in this brain whatsoever. So we praise God. He's given him a new brain and we just give him the glory and the honor and the praise. And he hasn't had an epileptic seizure now for nearly 15 months. So we give him the glory. He's just so awesome. He's a wonderful God. And we put our trust in him and we know that he shall, he shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord and we spoke scripture over him all the time and when we speak scripture Jesus watches over his word to perform it and he performed it and Calvin's brain is perfect and we just give God the glory the honor and praise in Jesus name amen <laughs> Amen, amen. Thank you, Lynn, for your testimony. The, to prove that his brain is uh, perfect, Kelvin is the one that does all of our YouTube uh, videos, uh, the one on my wicker milk. So he records them, uh, he edits them. Even myself, I don't even know how to use uh, uh, YouTube that way. So, and uh, he's in his uh, 70s. So, God would cause your brain to grow back to the normal size in the name of Jesus. Uh, there is no sickness, there is no disease that is impossible for Dr. Jesus to step in and to heal, to deliver in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, what we are going to see today. I want to emphasize it is Jesus who hears. Uh, we have no power of our own. It is faith in the name of Jesus, the use of the name of Jesus that make people perfectly whole. And it is the word of this book, this book, the Bible. Isaiah said that when the, the, the deaf would hear the word of the book and uh, they will... Uh, uh, start hearing, the mute will be speaking, the blind will be seeing when they hear the word of the book. So we don't have any uh, olive oil to give you or uh, sprinkling water to give you. 
there is a power only in the name of Jesus. And the gospel of Jesus is the power. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power. Uh, it is not uh, the good stories, it is the power of God. Behind the word of God is the power of God. So today what we are going to see is uh, the power of a testimony. The power of a testimony. Why do we share testimony? Uh, a testimony or testimonies. There is a power behind uh, the testimony. Uh, that's why you need to testify. That's why in the church we need to testify. Because testimonies are prophetic. Uh, a prophecy is uh, to foretell uh, what is going to, uh, a prediction, uh, like some of the new translation will, uh, especially when, when I was uh, reading uh, the Chinese uh, Bible, the translation of uh, the Chinese Bible into the English, and uh, wherever in, in the book of Corinthians where they say the prophecy, they wrote the prediction, the prediction, yes. So actually that's what prophecy is. So God is already predicting what is going to happen to you. So uh, the reason why we share a testimony and uh, our heart when we hear a testimony and when we read this book, is so that we can believe that God wants to do the same thing in our life. So today we want to see the power of a testimony, the power of a testimony, the power of sharing your testimony or sharing our testimony. Why do we do that? And why is this book full of testimonies of what Jesus began to do? In John chapter 20, John is saying that if everything that Jesus did was recorded in this book, there would not be a book big enough to contain all the signs, the wonders, the miracles that Jesus did for those three and a half years of his ministry on earth. But these ones are written in those, in the, that, the few, those uh, four gospels uh, as an excerpt of his life, as a sample, so that as you read them, you may believe. As we share testimony, the reason why, so that you may believe that Jesus Christ the same, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, as we saw him in this book, today in October 2020, and tomorrow for generations to come. The power of God did not stop when John, the last apostle, died. That's the lie from the pit of hell. So how come the power of God stopped? The healing of God stopped. The deliverance of God stopped when the last apostle John died, but the devil is still operating. So God has died, but Satan is still operating. That's nonsense. God is well alive. He's still doing the same thing today. The problem is, is lying with us, the believers, uh, that are perishing for lack of knowledge. So we want to know the power of a testimony, the power of sharing the testimony, it is very crucial that we know the testimonies that are contained in this book and that we know also what God is doing today, what he did yesterday uh, and what he's doing today. For Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So the power of a testimony, the power of sharing a testimony, testimonies are prophetic. Testimony are prophetic. Testimonies are uh to foretell what god wants to do in your life uh, are actually a prediction of what uh, like the chinese rendering says as a are a prediction the word testimony the rendering is a prediction of what god wants to do in your life now over in the book of revelation chapter 19 verse 10 revelation chapter 19 verse 10 and then uh, it is written and i fell at his feet and worshipped him. So John was saying the angel in his glory fell at the feet of the angel to worship him. We do not worship angels. They are our servants. We are sons. Sit at the right hand of God the Father in Christ Jesus. They are servants. So the angel said to, to, to John, see that you do not do that. So we don't pray to angel Michael. We don't pray to angel Gabriel. We don't do that. It is forbidden. Christians do not do that. Revelation 19, 10, we don't do that. We don't pray to any angels. And whenever a man wanted to worship an angel in the Bible, the angel always said to him, see that you don't do that. It is forbidden. So he said to John, stand up, don't worship me. Don't be uh, amazed by that glory of heaven. Do not worship me. 
but worship who? Uh, he says, uh, I am your fellow servant. So I am your servant. That's what he's saying. I am your servant. So the angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who have inherited salvation according to Hebrews chapter 1. And of your brethren, those who are born again, like Jesus says in John chapter 1, and he's quoting uh, Genesis chapter 28, you start seeing angels ascending and descending upon the son of man and the daughters of man. Uh, so angels, they ascend with your prayers, they descend with your answers. They are there to serve you uh, on behalf of your heavenly father. So we are not to worship them. They are our servant and the servant of our fellow brethren. So uh, who have the testimony of Jesus? Now, if you don't have the testimony of Jesus in your life, those angels will not serve you. That's why we start by that. You must be born again. Uh, it's, it would always boil down to becoming the son of God, the daughter of God. If you are not born again and none of this is for you, you must be born again to have help from heaven. You must be born again to have angelic assistance. You must be born again to enjoy the, the, the blessings of God. You must be born again. So the, those angels, they are saying to, that angel is saying to John, I am of your servant and the servant of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. If you don't have the testimony of Jesus, if your sins have never been washed by the blood of Jesus, then you don't have his testimony in your life. So angels cannot help you. The kingdom of heaven cannot help you. Uh, when he sent his disciples to preach, the message was this. In Matthew chapter 9 and in Matthew chapter 10, go preach what? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So the power of God is uh, within your reach. The deliverance of God is within your reach. The healing of God is within your, your reach. That's what it means, the kingdom of God is at hand. So it is within your reach. It is not uh, a far off. God is not a God a far off, but he's a God near at hand. So that's why he's asking you to repent because the way to be born again, to have that testimony of Jesus in your own personal life is to repent of your past life, to repent of your sinful life, turn your back from your, your old ways and uh, receive Jesus who died on the cross for your sin, who was, who was uh, uh, wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, the chastisement of your peace was upon him to receive that Jesus who became the scapegoat for all your mistakes and my mistakes, who paid the wages of sin is death, literally. The wage of sin is death. So he died for you so and I so that you and I can live. So for God so loved the world, John 3.16, that, uh, that he gave his only begotten son. So that whosoever, he qualifies everyone. Your skin color does not matter. Your age does not matter. Your race does not matter. Your language, your native language does not matter. That everyone that believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life so if you do not have the testimony of jesus christ in your life that you are born again washed in the blood of jesus then uh, there is no help available for you though the kingdom of god is within your reach though the deliverance of god is within your reach though the power of god is within your reach you need to have the testimony of jesus first of all in your life you need to make him lord over your life and how do you make him lord over your life? How do I make him Lord of my life? How do I have that testimony of Jesus Christ? I repent of my sinful life. I stop living the way I was living. I'm no longer a fornicator. I'm no longer a drunkard. I'm no longer an idolater. I no longer practice yoga. I no longer do uh, witchcraft practices. I no longer uh, am a Freemason or all those, those kind of things that are listed in the first Corinthians chapter uh, 6 verse 9 to 11, they should not even be mentioned among the believers anymore. That is uh, what it means to, to have the testimony of Jesus Christ in your life. If you want uh, help from heaven, truly the kingdom of God is at hand. The power, the deliverance of God is within your reach. But it is not on your terms, it is on God's terms. He says you need first of all to have uh, the testimony of Jesus in your life. He is is Jesus Lord of your life? Are you born again? That's why in John chapter 3, verse 7, Nicodemus was looking for the miracle. We know that you are a master uh, teacher sent from heaven because no one does those miracles unless God be with him. 
So Jesus cut to the chase. To, he said, listen, let us not beat uh, about the bush. You must be born again. I'm telling you, you must be born again. You are wondering about these signs and wonders. How can I receive it? Do I need to pay money? We don't need your money in the house of prayer for all nations. Freely we have received and freely we give. We don't need your money. For those Bible study also, we don't need your money. They are free of charge. You download them free of charge. You cannot pay for any miracle of God. Uh, uh, Simeon, that used to be a sorcerer, came in Acts chapter 8, was offering a money. Acts chapter 6, sorry. He was offering a money to, uh, to uh, Peter and John so that they would give him also the same power to lay hands on the sick. The sick would be healed and the people would be speaking in tongues. The people, Peter said to him, you and your money perish. You have no place in this kingdom. Be charging people for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The gift of God cannot be purchased with money. Iniquity has been found in you, just like iniquity was found in Satan in Isaiah chapter 14. Unless you repent, you are going to hell like uh, uh, Satan and his uh, cohorts. So you cannot buy the gift of God. It is on uh, God's term that we receive his uh, testimonies on God's terms, not on our terms. So worship God alone. Uh, so he's here to, the angels are here to serve us and uh, our brethren who are born and who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Worship God. We are in Revelation chapter 19, verse uh, uh, 10. For the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of a prophecy. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of of a prophecy. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of a prophecy. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and your Savior you, uh, in your heart by repenting of your sin, putting your faith in Jesus who died on the cross for you, making him Lord over your life, turning your back from your old life, that is you receiving that testimony of Jesus Christ. And that's the first thing that you need to do. You must be born again. That is what it means to receive the testimony of Jesus. And once you have that testimony, all the promises that are contained in this book, the prophecy, this is a book of a prophecy. It did not come by private interpretation. A man that just woke up because they ate too much last night and then they started to, uh, to write some nonsense. No, 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 no. This is not just a good story. This is a divine book. God spoke and his secretaries wrote down the content of this book. You cannot make it up. And uh, two thirds of this book is a prophecy. Prophecy, prophecy. So when you have Jesus Christ as your testimony in you, because you are born again, you qualify for the promises that are in this book or the prophecies that are in this book. The Prediction about your life that are in this book. He predicts that you are going to be healed. He predicts that you are going to be prospered. He predicts that you are going to be delivered. He predicts that he will give you uh, the place that the souls of your feet shall tread upon. This is the prophecy that, uh, these are the prophecies that are contained in this book. So before you have the prophecies of this book, you need to have a Jesus, the testimony of Jesus himself in your life. Are you born again? Even demons, they would ask you in the book of uh, Acts chapter 19, the worthless sons of Sceva, they wanted to cast out demons in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And then the demons actually to scratch their head. Mm, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you, by the way? Even demons, they know if you have the testimony of Jesus in your life or you do not have. They could not see the seal of the Holy Ghost on the forehead of those worthless sons, those vagabond sons of, uh, uh, of uh, Siva. So the, the, the one that was demon-possessed jumped on them, beat them up, stripped them naked, and they were the talk of the town the, in those days. So one, I need to have the testimony of Jesus, or I need to be born again. So that now the testimonies or the prophecies that I hear are now mine. I'm qualified for the prophecies of this book. I'm qualified to receive what is in this book. So truly testimonies are prophetic or are predictions of what God wants to do in your life and in my life. This book, when you read it, you need to see yourself in this book. Whatever you are reading, God, if you did it for Elijah, do it also for me. The way we are reading our Bible is wrong. It's totally wrong. 
because we are thinking that these people were superheroes. Mm -mm -mm, they were not. James chapter 5, verse 17, he says that Elijah, that's why I don't sing these are the days I will, I don't sing it, because I know where it is coming from. It is coming from unbelief. It's coming from we putting the, those people on the pedestal. James tells us, listen, the book of James is written to newborn again Christians to tell them how to behave in the house of the Lord. So he's saying to those newborn again Christians, uh, listen, Elijah was a man that has uh, the same nature like you and I. They were subject to the same passion. They practice righteousness or they live the life of holiness. People don't want to live a life of holiness these days. You will never experience the power of God. Pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. You want to see God move in your life, you need to change your life. His ways are not my ways. His ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. So I need to change my thoughts. I need to change my ways according to this book so that you will be able to move in my life. So without holiness, no one would see God moving in his life. That's what it means. And you ultimately, when we die, if we do not practice holiness, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, our name will be blotted out from the book of life. You will say to us, oh, my friend, how did you enter into this uh, party of mine? You don't have the white robe of righteousness. So bind this man hand and foot and throw him into hellfire where the worms do not burn. Uh, the fire is not quenched. So you need to practice righteousness. So Elijah was a man that was subject to the same uh, passion like you. Yet he practiced righteousness and then he prayed. So the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man, the righteous woman, avails much. There is no mystery in the Bible. If we do things God's way, we would have the same result that those people had in this book that we are reading. This is actually your story. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, and it is written of me. He was quoting what. Uh, uh, David said in the book of Psalm and Paul quotes it again in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 saying, Lo, I come in the volume of the book or in the volume of your scroll and it is written of me to do your will. My whole life has been already prophesied in this book. What God wants to do in my life, what God has predicted he wants to do in my life. My job is to line up with his, con find the condition attached to those, pro uh, those uh, prophecies, fulfill them and receive what is rightfully mine in the name of uh, Jesus. So, testimonies are prophetic, are actually prophecies over your life, and God wants you to have them. Now, over in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, he says, and they, we the saints, we that are born again, the moment you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, you've departed from sin to practice righteousness, we, the saints, they overcame him, Satan, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of uh, the testimony. Because your testimony is uh, a prophecy about your life. So the, the saints, we the saints, overcame Satan the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Now, the word testimony here is a hood, head and hood. Uh, a hood is. Uh, Ed is the written uh, testimony. So you overcome the devil when you know the testimony of God written in this book from Genesis to Revelation. And then the, uh, the other one testimony, uh, uh, Ud is your personal testimony or the personal testimony of someone else. When you hear what God has done in the life of someone else that you can see, that you can relate it to and relate with, it brings faith in you. If God did it for so and so, that I can see, ah, hallelujah, God will do it also for me. That's what testimony does in the life of people. That's why I don't bother taking the testimony of someone outside that I don't know myself personally, or that Lini does not know personally, or my team, they do not know personally that we've ministered unto ourselves. Because you don't know those people, it will be hard for you to relate. Sometimes people share testimony to impress people. I don't need to impress you at all. Even if that testimony is uh, insignificant in the eyes of uh, the people, it is not a wow testimony. 
but there is a prophetic nature to that testimony. And when we share testimony, it must be a reliable testimony. God does not bless any lie. If you try to amplify your testimony, to make it, to, to dramatize it, God does not bless it. God does not bless any lie. Stick, stick to the facts. Uh, even if you are excited, share your excitement, but don't lie when you are sharing your testimony. God to impress people. Already that's a pride. God raises the proud and uh, uh, gives grace to the humble. Let your testimony be accurate, be truthful. You don't need to impress anyone. I share the fact that in, when you share the truth of what has happened in your testimony, the spirit of prophecy is behind it. And God, when people would hear it, God would do it ringing in the head. God can do it also for me. God can do it also for me. That's why God commands us to testify. And churches today, they no longer testify. And that's why many people are struggling with things that they were not supposed to struggle with. Most of the time, I read old books. I'm not reading old books, Christian books, to have uh, the doctrine. Some of the doctrines are totally wrong, but the heart was in the right place. So when I'm reading old books, the books of uh, uh, early uh, 1900, uh, late 1800, that's, these are the books that I read. I'm reading them to find the testimonies of what God was doing. Because those testimonies are prophetic. They are fueling, they are there to, to fuel me, to infill me again with the spirit. Behind the testimony, there is a spirit of the Lord, the testimony of Jesus Christ, as we read in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, is the spirit of a prophecy. There is a spirit behind the testimony to say, I want to do it again in you. So the word Ehud, that is here, testimony in Revelation chapter 12, 11, is uh, on call, do it again. So when I hear testimony, God is saying on call, I want to do it again. Who is the candidate that uh, would, would believe me enough so that I can do that in the life of that uh, individual? That's why we share testimonies. There is a power, even the spirit behind the testimony that we share, the testimony of the word of God. First of all, if those testimonies are not in line with the word of God, we never share it. I say it again. If those testimonies are not in line with the word of God, we don't share it. When we share testimonies, we need to vet those testimonies. Are they in line with the word of God? Do they agree with the blood of Jesus, with the word of the word of God, and with the spirit of the Lord? Go these three agree on earth as a one. And in heaven, there are three who are one, the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three in heaven are one, like John explained to us in First John. So even when we share testimonies, we need to filter those testimonies. If they are not passing the test of the word of the word of God, the blood of Jesus, and the Spirit, uh, we don't share them. Now, if, for instance, someone comes and shares the testimony, oh, Praise the Lord, uh, I have uh, my, my immigration papers. So, hallelujah, how did you get it? Uh, I had a child out of wedlock, and then based on the child, they gave me paper. That's, that testimony does not pass the test of the blood of Jesus, because you had to compromise your faith by sinning so that you can gain the land. It does not, we say, we say thank you, God, for having mercy on that brother, having mercy on that sister, but it does not pass the test of uh, uh, the blood of Jesus. These three must agree. It must pass the test of the blood of Jesus, pass the test of the word of the word of God. Does God condone sin? He does not. They praise the Lord. Uh, God has delivered me. How did he deliver me? I had to do a fake marriage. He does not pass the testimony of the word of the word of God. He does not pass the testimony of the blood of Jesus. We will never share that in the house of prayer for all nations. We will say, God, thank you for having mercy on that brother. Thank you for having mercy on that sister. When you share testimony, you must be able to tell us all the details. And we would vet it if it is in line with the word of God. Thank God I had a child. The Lord, after 10, 12 years, I was able to, to have a child. Hallelujah. How did you get that child? Uh, I went to see a witch doctor, and then he took a leaf, put on my ears. I started to hear some children crying. That testimony does not pass the test of Jesus. God, no idolaters will enter the kingdom of God. So we don't share that testimony. We say, repent my sister, repent my brother in the name of Jesus.
if it is not in line, if it is not in agreement with the word of the word of God, with uh, the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary, and with the spirit of prophecy that is contained in from Genesis to Revelation, that testimony does not pass the test of the scripture. We never share it. We thank God for having mercy on you and mercy on me in the name of uh, Jesus. There's a lot of testimony that are being shared in the church. It does not bless anyone because God has not approved of those testimonies. Those testimonies must be approved of God so that the spirit of prophecy can be behind it to duplicate it. God does not want all the other sisters to be pregnant out of wedlock for them to have the stay. That's uh, uh, that condoning sin in the church. God does not want us to do fake marriage so that people can have whatever they want. That's not passing the test of the Holy Scriptures. That's why we vet the kind of testimonies that people share. God does not want us to go to witch doctor to have babies because we've been barren. Hannah did not go to Tammuz. In the days of Hannah, the world, the, up to today, the goddess of fertility is Tammuz. She came to the house of the Lord. She cried out unto the Lord and God gave her Eli. So God gave her Samuel and after Samuel, God gave her five more children. She did not go to Tammuz, but in the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 8, the women, they were coming to church, hallelujah, hallelujah, but at the same time also they were going to see Tammuz, and God opened the eyes of Ezekiel, look at what they are doing, they are coming to me in church, hallelujah, hallelujah, I've been ministering healing for a long time now, and many, uh, many of the Christians, they would come to me, they would they are, they are sick, they would confess that they've been to practice a seance of a spiritism, tarot card reading, uh, yoga, and all those kind of nonsense, and they wonder why their life is being uh, uh, miserable and uh, affected by the devil. We don't do those kind of things. These are demonic things. Christians don't do that. And they come to our churches for 14 years. They've been in those churches here in Glasgow or elsewhere. And when they come to us, immediately Lord said to me, repent of this, repent. Sometimes there is no need of any deliverance. A sister called me, Brother Joe, I need deliverance. I, need. I said, who told you that you need deliverance? I, uh, so that pastor said to me, uh, I must have deliverance, but he doesn't have the power to, to, to deliver me. I said, because himself is living in sin. If, it, if you don't like holiness, God will not work with you. Full stop. When God encounters anyone, he says to him, remove your son, that's because what you are standing is uh, holy ground. When he encountered Moses, it was about holiness. When he encountered uh, uh, Joshua, it was about holiness. So I said to her that pastor cannot cast out any demon because himself is not living uh, in holiness. That's why he's sending uh, you to me. But I'm telling you, there is no demon per se. If you shut this door, the you know, scene that you are in, the devil will uh, uh, leave you. The Bible says, uh, submit to God. So how do we submit to God? By doing this book. So I said to her, you must be born again. That's the beginning. If you want the testimony of this book, you need to have Christ Jesus the testimony in your own life. One, you need to be born again. You shut all those doors of sin that are in your life. And you will see, I don't need to waste my time in shouting for a demon to come out. No. I would just say, Satan is the fly. That's what Jesus said. With the little finger of God, I will cast him out. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10. He says, you've called me Belzebub, okay. But with the little finger, Belzebub is the master of the fly. So with the little finger of God, I would cast him out. In the eyes of God, Satan is a small problem. Sickness is a small problem. Disease is a small problem. It is our sin, like Isaiah 59 said, that have separated us from God. So when we receive the testimony of Jesus in our life, he will be able to work. Over in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 15, chapter Joshua chapter 5, Christ Jesus, the commander of the army of the Lord, came in the, uh, on the scene because they were about to go and battle against Jericho, the fortified city that has never been, uh, had never been conquered before. So Christ Jesus, the commander of the Lord of hosts, David always used to say the Lord of hosts throughout the book of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. David will always say the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts, because David was a man of war, of battle. He fought countless battles. He even says in the book of, said in the book of Psalm that God trained my hands for war. So David would always refer to God as the Lord of hosts. 
It is even Christ Jesus, the commander of the army of the Lord. So Christ Jesus, the pre-incarnation of Christ Jesus already appeared with his sword drawn out of his sheath to fight. Now Joshua came. He said, first of all, holiness, remove your sandals while you are standing in the holy place. Now let us talk. Now Joshua said, that's the same question that many Christians are asking Jesus. But you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He said to, to, to the, the commander of the army of the Lord, are you for us, the Jews, or are you for our enemies, the Canaanites? Christ Jesus says, neither. I'm neither for you. I am uh, nor for your enemies. I am on the Lord's side. Jesus is on the Lord's side. And if you, Joshua, you're on the Lord's side, I would fight for you. But if you now become an enemy of God, you would find me fighting you. When we pray the book of Psalm that says, Arise, O Lord, and let all your enemies be scattered. If we ourselves, the Christian, are the enemies of God, then we are going to suffer as well the judgment of God. They went against the AI, the smaller city. They defeated uh, Jericho, that fortified the city that had walls up to heaven. But they came against uh, a tiny city of uh, uh, AI. So they deemed that it was not important to send all the, the army. They had about 300,000 soldiers. It was 600,000 families in the wilderness. They had about 300,000 soldiers that uh, were registered. So they said, why uh, uh, tie uh, the, the, the whole uh, army, 300,000? We would only send 1% because that city was so insignificant. They only sent 1%, 3,000 soldiers to fight. And uh, the 99% of the army stayed home because it was such a tiny city. But they were defeated. And 36 of them died. So Joshua started to fast. Sometimes there is no need of any fast. He started to pray from morning, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. God said, why are you fasting? Why are you even praying? He said, but God, when Moses was our commander in chief, we went out to war. We came back. We never buried anyone. Our women were not bereaved of the husband or of their sons. So how come I've just taken over uh, Joe, uh, Moses and Nam starting already to bury 36, then Israel would be discouraged and they would uh, turn away from me because we know that your people, they are weak. God said, there is no demon here. Did I not tell you not to touch your cursed thing? See, in the, in the tent of Achan, there are things that I forbade you to be having in your house. If you remove it, then you would continue to go from victory to victory. And they found the things in the house of Achan. They stoned him to death. And then they went only now from victory to victory. Joshua never lost a single battle again. And he never buried anyone also in war. The word of God is simple. God made his ways known unto Moses. He did not, he did not hide anything. He said, if you do this, I do this. If you do this, I do. that's the way I want you to serve me. And I will fight for you. I will deliver you in the name of uh, Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of a prophecy. So testimonies are very, very powerful, very powerful, because it is saying to you and I that God wants to do the same thing in your life, the same thing that is written in this book, and the same thing that you've seen him doing in the life of another believer, because God is no respect of person. You don't need to envy any other Christian on earth. You don't need to envy Elijah, Elisha. You don't need to. If you pay the price, if you do the right thing, that's what he said to Cain. Cain, why is your countenance down? Why are you so sad? Because I've rejected you. If you do what is right, if you do what uh, your brother Abel did, will I not receive you? Satan is just trying to deceive that God maybe loves uh, uh, Abel more than he does me. No, he does not love Abel more than he does you, Cain. What you are doing is wrong. Your person is, has been rejected. So your offering also, your worship has been rejected. If you do what is right, Cain, I'm telling you, I will receive you. But he did not listen to that. God has no favorite. He wants to use all of us. He wants to deliver all of us. He wants to bless all of us. What he said to one, he says to all. Over in the book of Mark, Chapter 30, uh, chapter 13, verse 37, Mark chapter 
13, verse 37, Jesus says, what I say to you, I say to all, watch. So what God is saying to them in those days when this Bible was written is what he's saying to us today. He was not just saying to them uh, uh, for the, the sake of, so that when John, the last apostle, died, then that's it. If God died when the apostle died, I don't need to be a Christian anymore. I don't. I'm not here for religion. I don't. If uh, he's not the same to me like he were with them, then I don't need that Jesus at all. I don't want him. I really don't want that Jesus. I want the Jesus that is the same yesterday, today with me, and for my children that will come in the future. I want the Jesus that healed the sick, cast out devil, raised the dead. And by the grace of God, he has raised the dead, uh, six of them. By the grace of God, he has opened the blind eyes. He has of course, the mute to speak, those who are autistic to be healed, and so on and so forth. The barren to conceive, and so on and so forth. Jesus Christ the same. So what I say to one, Matthew, Mark chapter 13, verse 37, I say to all, watch. So watch what God is doing in this book and do the same thing. You are going to have the same result. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, he says, I perceive how the truth Peter is talking uh, to the Gentiles, uh, Cornelius household. I perceive how the truth that God is no respect of person. God has no favorite. What he says to one, he says to all. But in every nation, whosoever fears God, the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil, and that is the beginning of wisdom, according to the book of Proverbs. And the practices of righteousness or lives of holy life is accepted by God. If you depart from evil, you start living a holy life, God would accept you as well. You would qualify for what is in this book, for the testimonies of this book, because you have that testimony in you. And God is predicting already that he wants to do, he will do the same thing in your life as well. So what I say to one, I say to all, what you've read it that he did for one person, he wants to do that also for all all who are born again, like the angel says, you and your brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. He wants to do that. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of a prophecy. That he wants to do encore. He wants to do that in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, the psalmist says over in the book of Psalm 119, verse 129, Psalm 119, verse 129, he says, your testimonies are wonderful. Your testimony are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The psalmist knew that he needed to keep the testimonies of God, of what God did in his life and what God wrote in this book. The testimonies of God are wonderful and the door for my soul keeps them. He goes on to say also the same Psalm 119, verse 167. He says, my soul keeps your testimonies and I love them exceedingly. He loves the testimonies of God exceedingly. When I read this Bible, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. There is not a book that I've read more than this book, the Bible. I love the testimonies of the Lord. My soul loves them exceedingly. Because when I see this book, I see the prophecies about my own life, what God wants to do in my life. And I believe them. Testimonies are powerful. Now, let us now see how prophetic testimonies are. When you hear what God, what I say to one, I say to all. That is the principle. What I say to one, I say to all. If Jesus did it in this book, he wants to do that also for you in your life. And if you hear God doing something today in the life of another sister that has a child, that has this, and God did something for the life as well. God is saying to you that he wants to do duplicate, encore, that's the word testimony, a hood. He wants to do it again also in your own life. Now, let us take practical, practical examples. Uh, over in the book of, uh, let's take the example of leprosy, for instance. Leprosy. How people heard the testimony of one person, and because God did it in their life, they said God also can do that for us. Now, over in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 4. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 4. The words, Jesus had finished the sermon on the mount. He came down the mountain and then one leper came. He said, Lord Jesus, 
if you are willing, what do you mean that Jesus is willing? He's always willing. That's the word there in Greek. He said, I'm willing. In other words, I'm always willing. God is always willing to heal, to deliver, to save. That's why he came to die. So that leper said, Lord, if you are willing, with a tear in his eye, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Just say, what do you mean? That time? I'm always willing. That's the, the Greek rendering. He said, be cleansed. And the guy was cleansed immediately. Now, listen to what Jesus said in verse 4 of that uh, Matthew chapter 8. He says, now, uh, see that you, you tell no one, okay? But uh, uh, go your way and show yourself to the priest and offer a gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. God wanted, when the people were here, they came and testified. God commanded them to testify when they were healed of leprosy or any other thing. So they came and brought the sacrifice that see, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing the sacrifice to say thank you, Jesus, because I've been healed of leprosy. So Jesus commanded the guy, like Moses said to you, I'm telling you the same thing. Go tell the priest, show yourself to the priest, tell them this year I had leprosy, now I'm healed, God has done something, praise the Lord, that's why I'm bringing an offering here, hallelujah. So the other would heal. So, oh, God heals leprosy. God wants us to share our testimony because other people are going through the same thing. And testimonies are prophetic. When they are not lies, they are prophetic. And God is saying he wants to do the same thing that he has done for that lepers, for other lepers. Now, when he did it, something happened. Because what I say to one, I say to all. What I do for one, I want to do for everybody as well. Now, this is what happened. That we were now in Matthew chapter 8. This is the, the result, how testimonies are prophetic. Uh, now, immediately now, uh, we are in Luke chapter uh, 17. Luke chapter 17 from verse uh, 11 to verse 19. The moment people heard the testimony of that uh, leper, because the sermon of the Beatitude was the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. So when they heard that, oh, Jesus has healed that leper, he has testified in the temple, oh, so now 10 lepers, not one, not two, because they heard of what Jesus did for that guy. They said, if he did it for that leper, we also are lepers. He would do the same thing for us. So those 10 lepers, they came to Jesus. They said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus said to them, okay, Go show yourself to the priest. Just like I said to that person, go show himself to the priest. So you also go show yourself to the priest to tell and testify that we've been healed. Go. And as they went, the Bible said they found themselves they were cleansed of uh, leprosy. What gave them courage to come to Jesus? Because they heard the testimony of that one leper in Matthew 18 that was healed of uh, leprosy. And they said, oh... If he did it for one, he can do it also for We are suffering from the same condition. That's why you hear the testimonies of people, what God is doing for the children, for the sicknesses and disease, and put yourself. When Karen came, uh, she, she had a curvature of spine. They put a metallic bar. They removed the, on the spine. They, they removed the fallopian tube. What, what I actually shared, I shared the testimony of my elder brother, like I, I shared the last uh, Bible study. So the, the last healing uh, crusade, who fell from the second story of the building, broke his, uh, had a compound, double compound fracture on his uh, two uh, uh, legs, uh, broke his spine, was paralyzed from uh, neck to toe, and how we prayed, and he came out, started to walk, and so on. So when Karen heard that testimony, she said within herself, if God did it, wonderful. what she said to me is, uh, so that when you were sharing it, you believe. I've heard people preaching on healing, but they preach on healing as if it was a lecture. They did not truly believe what was coming out of the mouth. And I, I could sense that could, they don't believe what they are saying. They are teaching on healing. They are putting some scriptures together in the church, but they truly don't believe it. But when I heard your testimony and that of you, how God gave you a new heart when you were 11, 
uh, euro when you're suffering from a heart condition, they need the unit the heart transplant. When you shared your testimony, and when you shared testimony, your brother that fell on second story broke his spine, was uh, had a double compound fracture, was paralyzed from neck to toe. How God healed him, how he even went now to the Naval Academy, and uh, he's all about to graduate now. He has graduated, as I say, I shared the last, uh, last, uh, for, uh, last uh, healing crusade from the Naval Academy. So I believed also God could uh, restore me completely. And that's what God did. I went to a house. Uh, we prayed. Uh, she came to Abdis about the four healing crews. Say nothing happened. And then I went to a house. We sat down. And then I pointed out what was wrong in her life. She confessed. She repented. She abandoned all those things uh, that she was doing that were satanic. When our ways please the Lord, you will make even our enemies to, uh, to be at peace. Then two angels appeared to her, pulled out uh, a leg, straightened the whole body, removed the bar, the metallic bar, put a new, uh, new bone in her pelvis. And uh, within six months, she lost weight. She was plus uh, 28, going towards 30, 32 size. She came back to size 10 without any loose skin. I used to tell that just like God destroyed uh, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, God also would destroy, destroy the cellulite. So any height, God would destroy. She believed it, that God would destroy, like he destroyed the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Gergeshite, he would also destroy the cellulite. So we pray that God would destroy the cellulite, and God did the supernatural weight loss without any loose skin, from size 30-something to size 10 without any loose skin, so do surgery to remove that loose skin. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Testimonies, when they are truthful, they are prophetic. The spirit of prophecy will be behind it to say, I want to do it again. Who would dare believe that I can do it in their life? Who? God is looking for someone that would believe that you will be able to do it. And Karen believed. God did it. God sent an angel, like you said, in that Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 that the angel said i am your servant and that of your fellow uh, brethren so i come to minister to you so and two angels came and ministered to her literally and delivered her she's the one who pay all of our advertisement on cbn uk because she has seen what god did she said no if god has done it for me i need to advertise your healing crusade on cbn uk so that other people that are suffering like me would come and receive their own uh, healing Testimonies when they are truthful, when they are passed, they pass the test of the blood of Jesus, the word of the word of God, and the spirit of the Lord, they have a spirit of prophecy behind it. God wants to duplicate it. So those 10 lepers, the moment they heard, that's what Jesus did for one leper. 10 of them came. And they say, We also we know that you did it. So you can do it. We have the same condition. Do it for us as well. Now imagine. I've been to Tanzania, those are two families that were barren. And I prayed for them. I said to them, before I come back to Tanzania next year, you'd have a child. And the two of them were pregnant. One of them already has given birth. And the other one is giving birth in December. Now imagine when I will come back next time in Tanzania. All the other women that have already heard that testimony, they are waiting for me already. Me also, I have a problem with conception. Me also, they remove my fallopian tube. They remove my uterus. They are already waiting because they heard those two testimonies already. And many others that did not have worse conditions like that. We overcame by the blood of the lamb. Satan, the devil, we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That's why we share testimonies because people are going through similar problems. And when they hear that testimony, they believe in the heart. What God said to this one, he says to all of us. What God did for this one, he will do for all of us if we dare simply believe in the name of Jesus. Now, another case where people heard the testimony of what God did in one, of one person and the birthed faith in them to believe that God can do that also for them. There were two blind people in Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 from verse uh, 27 to verse 31. Sorry, to verse 31. Matthew chapter 20, uh, chapter 9 from verse 27 to verse 31. And now, prior to that chapter, sometimes people don't need to list to hear a similar testimony. They don't need to hear a similar testimony. 
they just uh, need to hear a testimony of what God has done. I remember, for instance, uh, we were dividing leaflets in 2013 uh, in the Mary, Mary Hill uh, neighborhood there. And uh, basically in those days, I was looking for dead people. I was looking for dead people because God has promised me, hope found a great number of dead raising. That's what God promised in the house of prayer for all nations, a great number of dead raising. Vision that I see is only of dead being raised. Vision that I see is uh, people bringing four coffins in the stadium and I lay hands on those dead. I uh, bring them out of uh, uh, the coffin in front of all the cameras in the name. That's the vision that I'm seeing in my dream that the Lord is showing me. That the, the vision that I'm seeing about Tanzania, there's a dead person that I need to raise there as well. So I know that this is not the last time that I will go to Tanzania until that vision is fulfilled. I will continue to go to Tanzania because there's a dead that I need to raise in Tanzania. There. So he said to us, up oh, found a great number of dead raising. And in 2011, that's when we had our first dead raised. So I was looking for the dead people. So I printed the card. Uh, Jesus Christ, the same is the resurrection and is the life. So I was posting those cards in all the mortuaries. I will see a funeral home. I would post that card. I'm looking for the dead. I know you have dead in that place. What will it, uh, you lose nothing if you invite me to pray for that dead person. That's also one of the reasons that I took a job in a care home so that I would be close to the dead people. I remember I was working at uh, the Nazarene, uh, one of the care homes run by the nuns. So that night, uh, there was one elderly person. They, they've already buried the three people, uh, three consecutive nights. They would have epilepsy feet and they would start to choking and they would die. So that nurse was uh, completely depressed because she has already buried uh, two that same uh, evening, you say same the previous nights. So I was now on shift that, that, that night with the, because the, with the nuns and all that. So they had one of them had an epilepsy fit and uh, the face turned blue and then was no longer breathing so the nurse now came already <laughs> because they, it, it, it is a catholic thing and the majority of people are uh, priests that are old nuns and said some devout catholic and they knew that i was a pastor hallelujah so i could pray i could do whatever i wanted to do in that thing so she was already sad, depressed, that nurse who was, was weeping, that this was a third, uh, a third dead. So I came, I uh, put my, 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 my hand on the chest, and they were panicking. I said, well, why would I panic? Jesus is in control. I put my hand on the chest that uh, she was a seven, uh, 70. So I commanded her uh, uh, life to come back in the name of Jesus. And I, and, I, and, I, and I spoke. I spoke life come back in the name of Jesus. It took about uh, five minutes and then uh, uh, she opened her mouth and then I tried to, uh, to put my hand to that. I, I, she, I would clear the, uh, the airway, she had to breathe again. She turned back uh, uh, <laughs> to, to normal. So when the paramedic came, they were they, initially they were coming to pick a dead body, but they came, the person was now sitting. They did not even bring her out. So they just uh, stayed there for one hour and then said, okay, she's okay. But in the morning, the word has already spread in the care home that this guy has raised the dead. So the nun, the, the nursing, the nurse that the chief nurse was a, was a nun. So she came. Oh, we want to employ you permanently now. <laughs> we heard what you did yesterday. We want to employ you permanently now in, a, <laughs> in our care home. I said, I don't want to work permanently. I'm just looking for the dead to lay my hands on them in the name of Jesus. And my agency called me. We, we heard the good news that you raised the dead. I said, I did not. Jesus did. But we always pray for, for dead people. And then they said, they want to give you a job, a full-time job. I said, I don't want any full-time job. Yeah. Uh, with the care home in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore in the name of Jesus. So that sister, when she saw our flyer in 2013 that I was looking for the dead, uh, I think those people from the funeral care home, when they saw it, they just threw it out. So she picked it up on the floor. So she said to herself, if these people, they believe in dead raising, it means they also believe in immigration. I have an immigration problem. I don't have anyone that is dead or is sick, but I have an immigration problem. So I can't go there. So she, I saw on a Sunday coming to church, and she said to me, 
are you the one that posted that uh, that, uh, that has been putting that flyer around? I said, yes, I'm the one that has been putting that flyer around. Uh, I said, what, are you sick? Do you have someone who is dead? He said, no. I said, so why are you coming? You you don't feel my, meet my the, 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 the criteria that I'm asking, I'm looking for. He said, no, if you have faith for the dead, you may have a faith for my immigration as well. I've been going through immigration for 13 years. So I saw your, your pamphlet, you, you are looking for the dead people. I said, if you have faith for the dead, so you must have faith for immigration. I have immigration. That's how she came to the church. Within three months, she was delivered of immigration and all of it, all of her children. So sometimes you don't need to hear the call, the exact testimony. You just need to hear a testimony of what God did. And you say, if he did that for that big thing, my case is a smaller case in the name of uh, Jesus. So now we were with uh, the blind. So two blind people, they heard of the testimonies of Jesus, what he was doing, how he healed the leper. They've not heard uh, maybe of uh, the blind, but they came. They said uh, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to verse 31, they say to Jesus, Jesus, we know. So they followed the Jesus. He just entered the house. They also entered the house of Jesus. What are you looking for? They say, we want to receive our sight. Have they seen someone else receiving the sight? No. Have they heard of it? No, but they've heard of other miracles that Jesus was doing. Now Jesus said to them, okay, do you believe that I can do that? They say, yes, we believe you can do that. If you can open, if you can purify the lepers, definitely you can open our blind eyes as well. So we say to them, according to your faith, be done unto you. That's what's in Matthew chapter 9. And uh, that's why he commissioned the 12 disciples to go. And chapter 10, he commissioned the, 12, the, the 70. Now, in uh, Matthew chapter 20, so his ministry is, uh, is evolving. Chapter 20 from verse 29 to verse 32. Blind Bartimaeus, having heard of the testimony of those two blind that were healed, he said, I also am a blind. So if those two have be, I heard that he opened the eyes of two blind people. So if he opened their eyes, he can also open my eyes. So when he was begging there, they said he heard the commotion. He said, What is that? What is that? Jesus is passing by. You, you mean that one that opened the blind eyes of those two people? He said, Yeah. So he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have also mercy on me. They said to him, shut up. And there are people that are more important here. Sometimes you don't need to shut up. You need to go after your miracle. People will discourage you. He cried out the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then Jesus stopped. And he said, call him. So he said, ah, be of good cheer. The master is calling for you. So he came forward. He abandoned already his clock, uh, that is beggarly uh, uh, clock. He would never pick up uh, that thing again. So he came and Jesus touched his eyes and uh, he received his sight. That I may receive my sight, he received his sight because he heard the testimony of those two other blind people. So he said, if he did it in Matthew chapter 9, and now we are in Matthew chapter 20, he would do it also for me. What I say to one, I say to all. What I do for one, I want to do for all. The testimonies are powerful. They are prophetic. They are predictions of what God wants to do in your life as well. Because he's no respecter of person. Now, if we are in, we are again in Matthew chapter 9 from 20 to 21. Matthew chapter 9 from 20 to 21. We have that woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, she had that issue of blood. She has spent all the money with the, the doctors and she did not get better. She got worse. So she stayed within herself. She has never heard of the uh, issue of blood being healed, but she has heard of the blind saying, she has heard of uh, the lepers being cleansed. She has heard of uh, the lame walking. Has she heard of uh, people being having blood issues? Because if you had a blood issue, you were not allowed in the society. You had to be quarantined, just like the lepers, they had to be quarantined. So she has never heard of someone coming close to Jesus. So she disguised herself so that nobody would recognize her. She put her scarf on her head and she came behind Jesus in the crowd. Many people are going to church, but they are just following the crowd, following the masses. They don't even know what they are looking for in church. 
She was determined. She knew what she wanted. She said, I'm coming for my healing. I'm not coming for the crowd. I'm coming to receive my healing today. And she said, when I will touch, and she said to herself how she's going to receive it. From the day of John, John the Baptist, until now the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. You need to take your healing, your deliverance by force in the name of Jesus. So she said within herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment and I'll be made whole. And she pressed within the crowd and came from behind and touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. And immediately, the Bible says, immediately the fountain of the blood dried up. And Jesus perceived that the virtue of power has gone out of him. Listen, I'm telling you the truth. Whether you touch Jesus or Jesus touches you, the result is the same. I say it again. Whether you touch Jesus or Jesus touches you, the result is the same. Virtue would flow out of him. Now, many of us are waiting for Jesus to touch us. Why don't you initiate the move with your own faith and touch Jesus and receive it like that? When she said, you know, I, said I will touch the hem of the garment of Jesus and I'm going to be healed. The angel did not say that to her. God the Father did not say that to her. The Holy Ghost did not say that to her. She said within herself, today I'm going to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus and that's how I'm going to be healed. That leper that we read in Matthew chapter that, 8, leper, that leper that we, re we uh, read in uh, Matthew chapter 9, chapter 8, sorry, he said to Jesus, if only you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus touched him. So he was waiting for Jesus to touch him, to be healed. So whether Jesus touches you or you touch Jesus, the result will be the same. I say to Jesus, I remember one day I was wrestling with Jesus like uh, uh, J Jacob was wrestling with Jesus. I say to Jesus, truly, it does not matter. Whether, uh, <laughs> whether you touch me or you don't touch me, Jesus, I'm going to touch you. Whether you like it or not, Jesus, I'm going to touch you. I have a purpose in my, my heart. I'm going to touch you. I'm coming out here with a power in the name of Jesus. That's what I determine in my heart. That I'm going to touch Jesus by faith. That's what I say to Jesus. I, I think it was a Six months ago, I think, I said to Jesus, I was, we were wrestling with Jesus about something. And I said to Jesus, Jesus, you know what? Whether you choose to touch me, that will be good. But if you don't choose to touch me, I'm going to touch you, Jesus. By faith, I've determined to touch you. I've determined this is what is going to happen in my life. And I'm going to touch you no matter what the cost. I'm going to touch you in the name of Jesus. For the sake of my generation, I'm going to touch you in the name of Jesus. She determined. God did not determine that for her. She saw other people being healed. She said, no, why will I stay with my condition? Today is my day. Not tomorrow. Today is my day. That's why I fill myself with testimonies because as I read, I say, yes, Jesus, that's what you can do for me as well. You can do this for me. Now, when she was healed by touching People are now perceive, oh, we've been waiting for Jesus to touch us. Mm. Actually, we don't have to wait. The truth is you don't have to wait. Whenever you want to be delivered, you can be delivered. So she gave people another revelation. The testimony of Jesus, that's why it's the book of Revelation. The testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, that we've been waiting for Jesus to touch us. We've been waiting for Jesus to touch us. But actually, he does not need to touch us. We can touch him, and the result will be the same. Now, in Matthew chapter 14, armed with that testimony of that woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, they came and from behind, Matthew chapter 14, verse uh, 30, uh, 36, the Bible says, as many has touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. They were made whole. The people now, once they heard that testimony of that woman, that Jesus doesn't need to touch you, you don't have to wait for Jesus to touch you, you can touch Jesus. And the result will be the same. They said to Jesus, Jesus, we know you are busy uh, physically, you are only limited, but don't worry. We are just, just allow us to touch your garment. And then we are going to be healed. God's 
is so willing to heal you that he would even use handkerchiefs. With those handkerchiefs, we've prayed for people, mute people outspoken with just handkerchiefs. The Bible says, Acts chapter 19, verse uh, 11 and 12, God did unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, that the handkerchief, the apron that were taken from his body when they were brought to the sick, the sick were hid, the demon left in the name of Jesus. And many times I would even take my phone, Lynn would send me a message that there is something going on. I would pray over the, I would record a prayer on WhatsApp, uh, the voice uh, record, I would record uh, the message, I would leave it. And what uh, Lynn would just do, she would play it. Someone is demon possessed, having an attack, she would just play it. A recorded message, she would just play it and the demon would leave in the name of Jesus. And she would save that message. <laughs> and months later, another demon would try to manifest at 1 a.m. She knows I'm sleeping at 1 a.m. She will not call me. She's, ah, I have the, where is the recording of Brother Jerry here on, on my phone? She would find it. And then she would play it again. And the demon would listen to that. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Now, Brother Jerry also, I know. They pack the belongings. They leave in the name of uh, Jesus. Even in our Bible studies, uh, we put the prayers in them. People read them and they are healed as they read them. Because the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So you can choose to touch Jesus today. Like I said to Jesus, if you don't touch me, I'm going to touch you by force. From the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers of violence and the violent take it by force. Whatever you are looking for, not just a healing, every aspect of life, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of a prophecy. God wants to do the same thing in your life. I remember when we had a healing crusade in, um, in Barhead in 2013, one lady, she was 82, she came, she was deaf. Whether you are 82, you are deaf, God still wants to open the deaf ears. So I put my fingers in a uh, in her ears. Uh, I don't put this finger because this finger is broken. So I would always put this finger. So this thing, my finger, this one is broken. I broke it uh, in 2009. So my, this finger is actually broken. So I always put this finger. So if you see me put this finger, don't ask yourself, why is he putting this finger? Not this one, because this one is broken. So I, and I tend to put this finger in the, in the eyes, in the ears of people. Uh, so I put my finger, I command that spirit of uh, deafness to leave, and it left. She could hear properly. I even put my, my wristwatch. She could even hear the tick, tick, tick of my wristwatch. So she came back two, two months later. Oh, I'm, I'm deaf again. I said, no, that's a life. My people have command that spirit to go. We command it to go again, and it never came back. She never uh, was deaf again, whether you are 82 or 96. God still wants to heal in the name of Jesus. There's no sickness. There's no disease that is too hard for Dr. Jesus to heal, to deliver in the name of uh, Jesus. My, my good friend, she was a Buddhist. She's from Taiwan. Uh, she was a Buddhist. Uh, I led her to Christ when I, we were in Manchester. She went back to, she went to China to work there for five years and then went back to, to Taiwan and she was married and she became pregnant. And uh, when she became pregnant, the child had leukemia. They did the, the test. The child had 95% leukemia. I was supposed to go to the, to the wedding in April that year, April 2016. Uh, but uh, I was just come out of a detention in Dongevo, so I was to, to solve my immigration issue, so I could not travel to Taiwan. So there is no distance in the spirit. Whether you are in Taiwan, in Dubai, truly does not matter. We have people that connect from Dubai, that connect from, uh, from China, from Taiwan, from Hong Kong. There is no distance in the spirit. So once you say to me that the, the, the child is 95% uh, in his body with leukemia, the doctor are saying that they should uh, abort. I, I'm the one who led her to Christ. I'm responsible for that. Uh, she suffered a lot of uh, attacks because she left Buddhism to come to Christianity. So I said to her, don't worry, you don't need to abort. Christian, don't do abortion. Christian, I say again, don't do abortion. Christian, don't do abortion. So if we say don't do abortion, so we need to now pray for God to restore that child. That is my responsibility. 
we need to stop running away from our responsibility and take our responsibility. So I prayed. So when the child was born, instead of uh, being 95% uh, with leukemia, the child had uh, only uh, 5% leukemia. And then we prayed again. And uh, within a month, the child was 100% free. 100% free from leukemia in the name of Jesus. That's a wonderful baby girl that she has. And then two years, no, this, this year, the Lord just said to me, I need to tell her that the God wants to give her another child. Uh, they no longer have that policy of only one child in uh, Taiwan. Uh, so she, she can, she's allowed to have a second one. So I, 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 because in China, we use uh, WeChat. We don't use WhatsApp. WhatsApp is blocked. So I have some Chinese apps so that I can communicate with the people that are in China and in Hong Kong and Korea. <clears throat> so I send her a message on, uh, on, on WhatsApp. On, uh, sorry, uh, WeChat that, oh, God wants you to have another child, receive your child, your second child in the name of Jesus. And then she said, oh, it's, it's, it's actually uh, accurate because I'm, a, I'm already pregnant, I say amen. So given God will know when you are pregnant because he's the one that has given you that baby in the name of uh, Jesus. So I think by the beginning of 2021, they will give birth to that second child. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you've not received the Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now is the time to receive that Jesus. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation so that you can have that testimony of Jesus in your life. When I would pray for that, then Lynn would pray for some of the sicknesses and some of the diseases, and then I will pray in the name of Jesus. So if you've not received the Jesus, or if you are a Christian that have one foot inside and one foot outside, it's time to have your act together. Because without holiness, no one will see God. And you will not see God after this life if you don't have holiness, if you don't receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The angels will be ministering to you. Is that like we've read? They are here to minister to, to do, those of us who are born again and to our brethren, brothers and sisters also that are born again. They are assigned it to us, not to unbelievers, to us. So be on God's side and you will see how God would move on your behalf in the name of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of a prophecy. God wants to do it also in your life. So I'm going to pray. If you've not received Jesus, open your heart and just say, God, I repent of my sin. I want you to enter into my life. I want from this day forward to change my life completely because I know you are a good God and you want to do great things in my life. Let me pray and then Lynn would pray for the sick and I would pray out after that for the sick as well. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Father, I present unto you your sons and your daughters who are here on this platform. Those that have heard that first of all, they need to have the testimony of Jesus in their life. That is the first thing. The angel said, we are here to minister to you. We are your servants and that those that have the testimony of Jesus, your brethren also that have the testimony of Jesus. I pray for those that have been making the light of the Christian experience. Those that have been having one foot inside and one foot outside, I pray that they would repent of their sins because the kingdom starts by repentance towards God and putting our faith in Jesus. I pray that uh, as many are here, that they will be remorseful for the kind of lifestyle that they've been living. They will be remorseful because they've been far away from Jesus. And today they are going to repent and put their trust in Jesus. I pray that my King and my Savior, as they acknowledge that they are sinners, because the wages of sin are death, actually. The wages of sin is death. That they would acknowledge that they have sinned against you and turn their back from the wicked ways to serve you in an acceptable way. Because if they serve you in an acceptable way, you said you would receive them. That's what you say to Cain. If you do what is right, I would also accept you. I would also receive you. I pray that today they must be born again. I pray that they would repent of their sin today. As they confess to you, my Lord and my Savior, I have sinned against you. Don't hold those sins against me, but blot them out in the blood of Jesus. And today, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come and have the ownership of my life. Come and rule in me today. I invite you in my heart in Jesus' mighty name. And if you have said that prayer inside your, your heart with the sincerity, I say to you, welcome to this family. Now you also have the testimony of Jesus in you. He now dwells in you in the name of Jesus. God has become your father. 
Now, Sister Lynn is going to pray. And then I'm going to pray, pray for the sick. And I'm going to pray also in the name of uh, Jesus. Sister Lynn. Heavenly Father, I just praise you and I glorify your name. And I just thank you for miraculously healing each and every single person who, under the sound of my voice, just for your glory, Lord, so that the earth will be filled with your praises and your glory will be everywhere. And I just thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace and love for everyone that you sent your only begotten son to the whipping post, Jesus. And Lord, he was whipped and he was scourged and he was whipped and his skin hung down in shreds, Lord. And there was just a mass of bleeding, quivering flesh underneath, such horrific stripes. And by those stripes, everyone was healed. He took all the sickness, he took all the diseases and we just thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, such agony, Lord. Oh, Lord, what an amazing God you are. And we just praise you and honor you for what you did. When, and then after that, Lord, you went up the hill to Calvary with a cross on your bare shoulders, Lord, bare of skin and the crown of thorns being pushed into your head for us, Lord. So we did not have to bear it. And you willingly separated yourself from the Father, taking everyone's sins in your body, hanging on the tree so that we all can have access to the Father and enter the kingdom of heaven. And we just praise you, Lord, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. We also thank you, Lord, because you have given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And the keys to the kingdom of heaven are binding and loosing. And also, Lord, you also gave us delegated authority to do your work on earth. You gave us power over all the power of the devil to trample on serpents, to trample on scorpions. And even the young lion and the dragon, you gave us the power to trample on. And we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And the devil is in the dust of the earth, according to Genesis 3, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you, your word says that the devil is cursed above all the beasts of the field and the cattle of the earth. And on his belly he will go and dust he will eat the rest of your life. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we now take those keys that you gave us, Lord, and we bind the strong man over everyone listening to our to the voice tonight and we command that you let those people go now in Jesus name for it is written devil you come but to steal to kill and to destroy but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to give us life and that in abundance and we claim it for the people tonight Lord and devil you are cursed above all the cattle as I said already and you will not prevail I thank you, Lord, that it is written, the people shall not die, but they shall live to declare the works of the Lord. And with long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation and none, that none means no one, not a single person shall go to the grave at a young age, but their years shall be as a shock of corn coming into season. So in the name of Jesus, let my people go now in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirits of sickness, disease, cancer, leukemia, arthritis, autism, death, destruction and infirmity, blind and deaf spirits and dumb spirits and the spirits of fear. For it is written, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, that dunamis power of God, love and a sound mind. And I just thank you, Lord, that any unclean spirit residing in any of the people under the sound of our voices tonight will go right now. Let the people go in Jesus' name. You have no right in their bodies, and we command you to go right now. And every single virus and every bacteria, we take authority, which you gave us in Genesis, Lord, COVID-19, HIV, that is not of God in the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to shrivel and die right now 
in Jesus' name to wither, and you will not increase one molecule ever again. You will simply die right now. And any fever in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and command it to go, and the temperature of the people to return to 37 degrees. Nothing more, Lord, nothing lost. And we just thank you, Lord, that by Jesus' stripes, the people are healed. And we thank you, Lord, for filling them with your life-giving spirit, filling them to the brim, Lord, where there is life is, where there is life, there is no death. And I thank you, Lord, that every single bone, every single joint, every single molecule of this body is completely restored back to the way you designed it, Lord. You knew them before they were even formed in their mother's womb and all their parts were absolutely perfect and we reconcile their bodies back to that way, Lord. And we command everything to come back into line and work in unison, work in harmony the way God designed you before you were even born as they were written in the book in heaven. Oh, Lord, I just thank you. I praise you, Lord, because you are our God. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us sound mind. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I command the minds of the people who are depressed, the spirit of heaviness to go in Jesus' name, and the mind of the people to come forth in Jesus' name and take control of your life and take control of your body. And we just praise you, Lord, and we thank you. And we praise you, Lord, too, because you create the fruit of our lips and none of your words fall to the ground. And we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you for that, that you watch over your word to perform it. And Lord, we thank you, too, for healing everybody under the sound of our voices tonight. Nothing missing, Lord nothing lost, complete wholeness and complete soundness and filling them with your wonderful peace, Lord, for you are the Prince of Peace. And we just give you the glory, the honor and the praise. You truly are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides whatever is necessary, Lord. And we thank you that any plant that has been not not being planted by my heavenly father shall be uprooted tonight in Jesus name. And I thank you for that. And I just give you the glory, honor and praise in Jesus name. I prayed. Amen. Amen. Heavenly father, we just want to say thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise for your people that have joined us this very evening. Father, thank you because 2,000 years ago you sent your only begotten son, Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we were healed. Thank you for that sacrifice. Thank you because we have read it today that there is a power in your testimony, a prophetic power behind every single testimony of the word of God and personal testimonies. There is a power behind it. Now, we don't need to wait for you to touch us. We can touch you also by faith. The result is going to be the same. Father, I thank you for everyone. I come first one. I command the healing of every broken heartedness in our midst in the name of Jesus. That the, the tears of those who are mourning in Zion, Father, that you will dry up all those tears in the name of Jesus and show them that there is a bright future before them. And Father, they will not weep forever in the name of Jesus because weeping may endure for a night, but surely joy comes in the morning. Fill them with your joy in the name of Jesus, that the joy of the Lord will be the strength in the name of Jesus. And Father, let them go from strength to strength, from faith to faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I present unto you your sons and your daughters. I command in the name of Jesus that whatsoever has been troubling your daughter, Alison, I curse it in the name of Jesus. You sit and listen to me. You've been tormenting Alison and Alison and the family for so long. I curse you, Satan. The Lord rebukes you today in the name of Jesus. The one that has created heaven and earth, he rebukes you today in the name of Jesus. Satan, remove your hand from Alison and the family in the name of Jesus. I command you, devil, leave at once in the name of Jesus. Pack all your belongings. 
live at once in the name of Jesus. And I command the uh, ministration of angels to ascend and descend uh, upon Alison and her household and bring down a petition speedily in the name of Jesus, because they are here servants to minister to us and our brethren who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So I send forth your angels. You see that they happen to the voicing of the word of God right now. I send your angel in Alison's house household right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we command every foul spirit that has been tormenting that household to come out from those walls, come out from the people in the household. And in the name of Jesus, I command perfect wholeness and perfect soundness from the crown of her head to the tips of her toes in the name of Jesus. Nothing missing and nothing broken. Your hand is not too short to deliver. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak against leukemia. Leukemia is a name. There's no distance in the spirit, whether we are here in Kenya or the people are in Taiwan, there is no distance. Actually, Taiwan is further than Kenya. So in the name of Jesus, you, you send forth your word to heal them and deliver them from all kinds of destruction. I send forth your word in that uh, body of that we girl in the name of Jesus, you, leukemia. I curse you. You are a name. So listen to me, Satan, that has been troubling this young girl with leukemia. Leave at once in the name of Jesus. I command all the vitals to be normal in the name of Jesus. I curse you from the pit of hell where you came from, leukemia. I threaten you. Leave at once in the name of Jesus. And I command restoration as a health instantly in the name of Jesus. Let there be spiritual blood of transfusion, even the blood of Jesus that is speaking better things. For we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. The blood may uh, show that it has been affected with leukemia, but the blood of Jesus is speaking better things. And we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I command the blood of Jesus to speak better things concerning that we girl and leukemia leave in the name of Jesus. And concerning Sister Nelly's brother, you epilepsy, you are a name. You listen to me very well, epilepsy. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Go back to the pit of hell where you have originated. All the feet that you are bringing in that brother, I curse you in the name of Jesus. Pack your belongings, leave at once, uh, epilepsy in the name of Jesus. And every kind of addiction in the name of Jesus, of alcohol and drugs, leave at once in the name of Jesus. I command blindness, your spirit of blindness, leave at once, short-sightedness, leave at once, you are a spirit, I command you to leave the body of the people at once in the name of Jesus. You seek or sell anemia. You seek or sell anemia. The blood of Jesus has the power to wash away every smallest particle imaginable in our body to cleanse it by the power of the word that is behind it. So I command the genotype to be changed completely from SS to AA immediately in the name of Jesus. You the one that manipulated the genotype of those animals that you taught Jacob how to manipulate the genotype so that they would be only giving birth to the speckled, the spotted, and those that have stripes. So shall it be. I command that genotype to change from SS to AA in the name of Jesus. I speak to you, you HIV AIDS. I curse you right now in the name of Jesus. Leave that body at once in the name of Jesus. Go back to the pit of hell where you have originated. I command perfect wholeness and perfect soundness. I command that the cancer, wherever you are spreading in the body, I curse you cancer. Leave at once in the name of Jesus. Go back to the pit of hell immediately. And I command perfect holiness, you spirit of death that is behind the cancer, leave at once. They shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. You finish your work here, cancer, leave. With the spirit of death behind you, leave in the name of Jesus. I speak to any form of paralysis. I command the spirit of infirmity that is behind the paralysis, leave at once. From the, the paralysis that is going through the spine, leave at once in the name of Jesus. That Kundalini spirit in that spine, leave at once in the name of that serpentine spirit that has been hiding in that spine, leave at once in the name of Jesus. I curse you from the pit of hell where you came from. I command you to go back to the pit of hell in the name of Jesus. I command those deaf ears to pop open. I command the hearing aids to be removed. 
deaf ears and you listen carefully to the word of the Lord, the deaf shall hear because of the word of the book. So I send forth the word of God in those ears. I command them to hear properly in the name of Jesus. Now you autism, you are a name. And we have already cases of autism being healed. So you are a name autism. I curse you autism. And every other power of witchcraft that is being brought into that, into that, that, that house. I command you autism in those children leave at once and never do it. And I command the normal behavior of those children now in the name of Jesus. I speak to you, you down syndrome, you are a name. I command that excess chromosome to be removed. I command the blood of Jesus to speak better thing because we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Let there be a spiritual transfusion to change the, the DNA structure of uh, that child that uh, Down syndrome is completely re, uh, healed and disappears. The features change. I command, uh, Father, thank you for all what you've decided to do, but what you have begun, you would finish. I command those bow legs to be straightened in the name of Jesus. I command that eyesight to be completely restored, show steadiness to live at once in the name of Jesus. I command that the tongue, the speech to come forth right now in the name of Jesus. Your speech, you come forth right now in the name of Jesus. I command all the arthritis, the sugar, diabetes, and all the mental illness leave immediately. Spirit that have been tormenting the people of God leave at once in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise. We want to give you all the adoration. I command the swelling of that cheek, that cancerous uh, uh, report that is uh, growing already, uh, cancerous cells that are growing in that cheek my king and my savior, and the cheek is growing, I curse it, I curse it. I command the swelling to subside completely in the name of Jesus. And I command the cancer that is in that mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you. Father, we want to bless you. I command that detached retina to be reattached in the name of Jesus at once. That detached retina to be reattached immediately in the name of Jesus. And I command you to stay in place in the name of Jesus. And the eyes, I command you to see properly in the name of Jesus. Father, those fallopian tubes that have been removed, that uterus that has been removed, I command you to be recreated in the name of Jesus. Recreate that whole reproductive system in the name of Jesus. And I command them to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for all the other needs of your sons and of your daughter. Those who are believing you for marriage, those who are believing you for a stable home, I command the spirit of peace to invade the home in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. I command peace to be enthroned in the home. Any spirit of division, of conflict, of strife, leave at once in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of gesture, leave at once in the name of Jesus. And I enthrone peace in those homes. Father, we bless you. The spirit of drunkenness, leave at once in the name of Jesus. We don't go back to our vomiting, drinking again. You spirit of backers, leave in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. Any kind of voice that your people are hearing, I curse those voices of mental illness. I command them to go. Any brain that has been shrinking, I command it to grow back. The restoration, no dementia, no uh, Parkinson's disease, no Alzheimer. I command perfect wholeness in that brain, and I command perfect soundness from the crown of the head of the people to the tips of the toes. I send forth your word to heal the people and deliver them from all kinds of destruction. Father, we thank you because your hand is not too short to deliver your people. And as your people have reached out by faith and touched you, Father, touch them back in the name of Jesus and let them experience the manifestation of the deliverance right now, of the healing right now, of the prosperity right now for your own great name's sake. We thank you. We'll be careful to give you all the glory and also to testify so that others can also be encouraged that you want to do the same thing in the life. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.